Hello everyone and welcome once again to KO Bikes Books. Today I have another book review for you and that is for Star Wars Lost Tribe of the Sith by John Jackson Miller. This is a short story collection um, including I believe seven short stories and one novella. This is one that I've been looking forward to reading for quite a while for two reasons mainly. First of all it's written by John Jackson Miller who wrote one of my favorite Star Wars books ever which is Kenobi. Um, and it is also the last Old Republic era book that I needed to read before I had read everything from that era, um, which uh, for me would be a, a, a nice thing to check off the list, even though the Old Republic era is the era with the least amount of books. Uh, it still would uh, feel nice to finally be done with a full era of Star Wars books. And so I was very excited to read this book for that reason as well. Um, and I also was, was interested in it because it's a, a Sith uh, story. And for those of you who know me, you probably know I enjoy some good Sith stories, especially Darth Bane and Darth Plagueis and all kinds of other ones. Um, I just generally really enjoy Sith and dark side centric stories. Um, so I was really looking forward to reading this one. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a little odd because there's not a whole lot of short story collections in Star Wars. Um, so it was a bit of a unique experience. Um, and I would say this one for me was not as good as I hoped it was, but it was still pretty decent. So to get started, something that I did like about this book was the uh, general idea of it. Uh, essentially that this is telling the story of the titular Lost Tribe of the Sith, which is a group of Sith who crash lands on a planet um, and basically is cut off from uh, the rest of their faction for a very long time. Um, this book uh, covers a, a significant amount of time. The first uh, four stories, I think, take place around 5,000 years BBY, uh, which for those who don't know, uh, that's about 5,000 years before the Star Wars films. Um, and then the next two stories, I think, are around 4,000 BBY, so about a thousand years after those first stories. And then the last handful of stories are a thousand years later, again, in about uh, 3,000 BBY. Um, so this covers around 2,000 years worth of, worth of time, so it's a pretty big, uh, big chunk of time that this book covers. So it basically is about the history of this Lost Tribe of the Sith, and uh, what they're up to on this planet, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, this book is also uh, apparently a uh, tie-in uh, of a kind to the Fate of the Jedi series, which I have not read yet. I'm still only halfway through New Jedi Order. Um, but uh, so if you're interested in Fate of the Jedi, then you might want to pick this up as well. But I really enjoyed that idea of this book. Uh, it being uh, focused on this group of Sith over the course of a, a long period of time in the Old Republic era. It, it was interesting because there's not a whole lot like it um, that I have read in Star Wars where it's basically the history of this one group uh, over a long period of time. So that was kind of cool. Um, another thing, I did enjoy some of the short stories in here, um, particularly as you get towards the end of the book. Um, I did enjoy one or two of the earlier ones, but to me, the uh, sixth and seventh stories, so I'm going to have to look up what they're called here, uh, Pantheon and Secrets, uh, which take place, again, around 3000 BBY. Those two were my favorite stories in this collection by a pretty significant margin. Um, I did enjoy some of the other ones. There was some good stuff in here, um, but those ones especially were my favorites. And the novella was pretty solid as well. Another thing I did enjoy about this collection was um, just the, uh, the focus on the Sith, which wasn't, I think, as big a focus as I would have liked. Obviously, you know, the Sith are a focus in this book, but I was really hoping for much more of the, like, the Sith teachings and things like that, like you would get in, like I said earlier, Darth Bane or Darth Plagueis. That's not as big a focus here, you know, the Sith teachings, the Sith philosophies, um, but it does still come up a little bit, and I did enjoy it there. And the last thing I'm going to mention as far as positives, because frankly, I don't have a ton to say about this book, is I did enjoy how everything kind of came together in the end. Um, as I was reading this book, you know, the early stories, even though I enjoyed a couple of them, um, I was kind of reading them and I was like, I don't really get what the through line is here, aside from it being about the history of this group. But it wasn't really drawing me in in terms of like actually seeing 
where everything connected together. Um, but the last few stories in this collection actually do really tie things together very nicely and actually made me appreciate the early stories a little more in hindsight. Um, because you see why and how everything ties together and why the earlier stories were very important for the later stories and all that stuff. Um, so I did enjoy that about it as well. Um, like I said, this book is basically a history of this group. Um, and so I think the later stories really uh, bring that point home and saying like, you know, all of this history was really important and this is where it kind of wraps up and wraps together real nicely. Um, as far as things I didn't like so much in this book, uh, mainly the thing is, first of all, there are some stories in here that I just wasn't really that into. Uh, like I said, a few of the earlier stories I did like, but the other ones I was not as much into. Um, and even the novella, honestly, as much as I did enjoy some of the stuff in it, um, I enjoyed seeing some of the characters from those two short stories that I really enjoyed. Uh, they show up a little bit in that, uh, that novella. Um, I also enjoyed the action because it was a more action-packed story. Uh, there's some good like Sith philosophy stuff in there as well a little bit. Um, but generally this collection for me was pretty hit or miss. Um, I really loved a couple of the stories. I thought a couple of the other ones were pretty good and the rest just didn't really do much for me. And that's pretty much the big thing for me with this book. The r real reason why I can't say I loved it or anything. Um, is just that some of the stories didn't quite land for me. Um, and maybe with that hindsight that I mentioned of seeing how everything ties together, maybe if I went back and read uh, the early stories again, maybe I'd enjoy them more again uh, a second time around. But I don't know, just, just first read didn't really grab me. None of the characters really drew me in that much, aside from, like I said, the ones from those couple short stories did in interest to me a little bit more. Um, I liked the, I guess, the idea and the way that the uh, characters tied into the overall story of the entire book, more so than the characters themselves, if that makes sense. Um, like, just the way that they influenced things later on um, and the way they contributed to the history, but I didn't find the characters themselves uh, to be very interesting in this book. Uh, a lot of the, the plot lines didn't really grab me too much, just... You know, overall, it was just kind of a hit or miss collection, uh, which is not unexpected considering this is a short story collection, and most short story collections for me tend to be hit or miss. There's some that I really like, some that I don't like as much, that kind of thing. That's that's nothing new, um, but it is a little unfortunate. Um, but that is pretty much the main thing for me with this book was just I wasn't completely drawn in for a lot of these stories. Um, none of them were necessarily bad or even necessarily mediocre. They just didn't quite do it for me, um, I guess. So overall, this book, I would say, was decent. Uh, wouldn't say it was great or anything like that, or even bad. It was just decent for me. Um, a couple of the short stories, like I said, I did really enjoy, and I enjoy how the overall uh, story of this collection kind of came together. Um, but a lot of the individual short stories didn't really grab me. A lot of the characters didn't really grab me. A lot of the plots didn't really grab me that much. Uh, it was just okay. You know, it wasn't an amazing collection. Um, I, I do think that the, the two short stories, the sixth and seventh ones, are a, for me, the only real memorable part of this collection. Um, maybe with some parts of the novella, but even then I, I had high expectations for the novella because I love those last couple short stories and the novella just didn't do a whole lot for me. So overall, yeah, this one was just okay for me. Um, some really good stuff in here, but uh, a lot of it also just didn't quite draw me in. So as far as a rating out of 10 that I would give Lost Tribe of the Sith, I think I'd give it like a 6.5. Um, though those two short stories that I really enjoyed really kind of bring that score up for me. Um, but, uh, the rest of it, you know, if, aside from those two short stories, this is still probably something I'd give like a six, maybe just because they're not bad, but they're not really that good. They're just, you know, pretty decent stories. But, uh, those two that I really enjoyed kind of bring the score up a little bit for me. Um, but unfortunately not enough for me to say I really, really enjoyed, uh, this collection a whole lot. So that just about wraps up my thoughts on The Last Tribe of the Sith. Let me know down in the comments if you have read this collection and what you thought of it. Hopefully you enjoyed it a little more than I did. Um, but uh, that is pretty much it for this video. And so thank you all for watching and I will see you guys next time.